to the Science with Hazel. I'm making today's video on limestone chemistry and um, we've got the cat with us um, so I'm not sure how long she's going to stay here. Oh that's a happy noise. Can you hear that? Such a grouch. So today's video is on limestone. I'm going to be talking you through the crucial words to do with things like thermal decomposition, how you make mortar, cement and concrete, chemical reactions that take place, how you test for carbon dioxide, etc, etc, etc. So let's start by looking at what limestone is. Now obviously it's got the word stone in it, it's a type of stone, it's a type of rock. In fact it's a sedimentary rock and for those people that need to know how sedimentary rocks are formed, remember that sedimentary rock is formed over millions of years from the bodies of dead sea creatures and what happened is that these sea creature bodies ended up squashed together and the layers built up and due to high temperature and pressure all the water between those layers got squeezed out so the whole lot was effectively cemented together so that is what limestone is and that's why you find lots of fossils in limestone too. Now we need to know about the formula of limestone so remember the name of limestone the chemical name of it is calcium carbonate you need to know that its formula is CaCO3 be prepared to write the formula very accurately or be able to work it out from its constituent ions. So remember the constituent ions here are calcium, which is Ca2+, carbonate, which is CO3 2 minus, and when you pop those formulae together, it becomes calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Now, we like to heat limestone, and if we're doing it on an industrial scale, we do it in a rotatory kiln, I think that's its name, and effectively, due to the high temperatures involved, the calcium carbonate breaks down it thermally decomposes and the two substances it breaks into is calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So if they ask you the type of reaction when calcium carbonate is heated, you want to say it is thermal decomposition. If they ask you for the two products, you're looking for calcium oxide, CaO, and carbon dioxide, CO2. It doesn't matter what type of carbonate, by the, by the way, that you heat. If you heat it high enough, it will break down into whatever the metal carbonate is and carbon dioxide. So I don't know if I'm explaining it that well. But for example, they may ask you about what happens if you heat magnesium carbonate. And it literally will be the same as if you heat calcium carbonate, but this time you're going to form magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. The same with potassium carbonate, that will break down into potassium oxide and carbon dioxide. So don't get thrown if they like to throw in a curved ball. Now, one of the things they always ask is what is the test for carbon dioxide? Remember this is where you add lime water for the first mark and remember carbon dioxide turns lime water milky and we're going to look more now at the limestone cycle because that will help you understand why you see that cloudiness, why you see that milkiness. So as with all cycles, you start at the beginning, it goes round and you end up at the same place again. So it doesn't really matter where you start, but a sensible place for me to start in the limestone cycle is to talk about the heating of calcium carbonate, which I've already done. It thermally decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, you're probably thinking she's repeating herself, but it is the start of the limestone cycle. At this point, we add some water to the calcium oxide to form calcium hydroxide. Then we add some extra water, and that forms calcium hydroxide solution, which we all know as lime water. And then if you add carbon dioxide to that lime water, that calcium hydroxide solution, you form calcium carbonate again. And so when you see that milkiness in that lime water, it's literally a suspension of limestone. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, I just wanted to touch on some terminologies quickly in case they mention the word slaked lime or quick lime at you. Don't get confused here. Just know that calcium oxide has a more normal name, which is quick lime and that calcium hydroxide has an alternative name which is slaked lime. But yeah, please don't get confused there. Just want to quickly touch on one of the uses of calcium hydroxide. Remember that they love adding it to soils which are too acidic because the calcium hydroxide is alkali, so what that alkali will do is neutralise the acidity in the soil and help some plants grow better. Cool, we're flying along with this. Now we're going to look at some building uses of limestone because it is one of the most useful substances we can build with. So let's first of all look at how we make cement. Remember cement is that stuff you see builders using like trowels with and they spread it and they kind of like lay bricks with it. I'm not a builder, I don't really know, but that's what I think cement is. And if they ask you how you make cement, then you're just going to say you heat limestone with clay in a kiln and that is how cement is made. Now mortar, I really don't understand how it's that different from cement, but the mortar is the stuff you literally find between all the bricks. And if they ask you how you make that, 
then you're going to get cement and you're going to add sand and water to it. And then lastly, concrete. Now I'm better with this one. It's kind of the stuff that those big oppressive buildings are made out of. It's a very strong building material. You get big solid blocks of it. If they ask you how you make concrete, then you get cement, you add sand to it, you add water to it, but you also add some small stones, which gives it all of its strength. And we call those small stones aggregate. And that is how you get concrete. The last thing I'm going to touch on is more of a kind of geography question, which is more about how limestone quarrying actually affects the environment and whether it's a good or bad thing, because sometimes they like adding six mark questions where you have to discuss the advantages or disadvantages of building a limestone quarry. Remember a quarry is just a, like a place where loads of a certain substance is found. So a limestone quarry, what they'll be doing is they'll be digging loads and loads of limestone out of the ground. So if you think about the good things, then clearly we're going to get a nice supply of limestone. It's going to provide jobs to the local people, which we love to talk about. Many disadvantages though, which is first of all habitat destruction for animals. Obviously if you're digging massive holes, a lot of animals are going to be displaced. There'll be some noise pollution, there'll be some, um, what's it called, visual pollution, where it looks ugly. We can also talk about pollution in terms of the types of chemicals that are released at the quarry. So remember, if you're heating up that limestone, then carbon dioxide is going to be released. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, contributes to global warming, which leads to polar ice caps melting. It means that polar bears' habitats are destroyed, so lots of bad things with carbon dioxide being released. There may be cement particles in the air and that leads to global dimming or it can cause asthma in people. You might end up with nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides in the air due to burning. These are both gases which contribute to acid rain because they dissolve in water, they form acid rain. Remember that acid rain destroys trees, it destroys limestone buildings bizarrely and it also makes lakes too acidic. So I kind of went off on a bit of a tangent there, don't worry too much if that was a bit too much for you, just ignore me. I'm going to attach some exam questions now so you can see the sorts of questions that they like to ask and I really hope you found this video helpful. Do subscribe to my channel and I'm going to grab Lyra and no doubt she's going to squawk at me but she wants to say bye. Come here. She's saying bye very, very quietly. Question two. Limestone is used to make many different materials. Heating limestone produces calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Complete the sentences. The main compound in limestone is calcium carbonate. The reaction to produce calcium oxide from limestone is thermal. So remember thermal means to do with heat. Um, you're breaking down using heat, so the word you need here is decomposition. Calcium hydroxide is produced when calcium oxide reacts with the clue here is the hydro, so hopefully that's screaming water at you. Calcium hydroxide is used to neutralise acids because it is an... And the answer here is alkali, because remember when you add an acid to an alkali, you produce a neutral solution. There's another clue here, the fact that it says it is an. The N on the an tells you that it needs to be a vowel, which is why alkali is correct. 2b. Cement is made from limestone and clay. Concrete is made by mixing cement with water, sand and aggregate which are small pieces of rock. A group of students did an investigation on the amount of aggregate needed to make the strongest concrete beam. The students used this method. Use the same mass of cement and same mass of sand, but change the mass of aggregate to make seven different concrete mixtures. Use the different concrete mixtures to make beams of the same size. Add weights, as shown in figure two, until the concrete beam breaks. The students' results are plotted on the graph. One of the points is anomalous. Complete the graph in figure 3 five by drawing two straight lines of best fit. So remember anomalous is the odd one out and we've been told to draw very clearly here two straight lines of best fit. So this point here doesn't fit the pattern, it's anomalous. So I'm circling that one and then when I draw my lines of best fit I'm going to ignore it. You want to use a ruler and a sharp pencil. I'm using the iPad so it's going to be difficult but just make sure it goes through all the points which fit the pattern and then here's your second line of best fit coming down here. Mine's a bit wobbly. 5. Limestone contains calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Name the type of reaction that takes place when calcium carbonate is heated strongly and name the products formed. So make sure you're answering both parts of the question here to get all three marks. So remember if you heat something strongly then you're going to be thermally decomposing it so the type of reaction is thermal decomposition and all that happens is the calcium carbonate breaks into its constituent parts. So it's going to break down into carbon dioxide and calcium oxide. 
If you're not confident with the formula, do write that out in full. 5b. A student investigates what happens when limestone is heated strongly. This is the method the student used. Measure the mass of limestone before heating. Measure the mass of solid product after heating. Repeat the experiment three more times. The student's results are shown in table three. Calculate the mean mass loss taking into account any anomalies. So we're looking at this row here because we're looking for the average mass lost and that says mass lost. Now look along the points and see which one's the odd one out. We can see very clearly that one is the odd one out because everything else is around 1.8. So at that point you just want to work out the mean which is by adding up the remaining numbers. So that's 1.8 plus 1.9 plus 1.7 dividing it by how many there are which is 3 and you'll get an average which is 1.8 grams. 5b part 2. The student used the chemical equation to calculate the maximum mass lost by 5 grams of calcium carbonate when heated. The maximum mass lost is 2.2 grams. Suggest and explain two reasons why the mean mass lost in experiments to heat the limestone is less than 2.2 grams. Do not include any reference to weighing errors in your answer. It's worth four marks. You need to make four separate points. So we're looking for why the calcium carbonate um, didn't decompose fully and why we get far less than we would expect. So actually, I've already touched on one of the the first things you can say which is that you can say the limestone did not fully decompose or did not react we could also talk about there being issues that maybe the temperature wasn't high enough to allow full decomposition this meant that less carbon dioxide was produced so that's the third mark and then quite frankly if the limestone wasn't pure in the first place you're not going to make as much as you would expect so question one the diagram shows some of the substances used and produced at a cement works limestone is mainly calcium carbonate CaCO3 Write the correct answer in each box. The formula shows that calcium carbonate contains something, different elements, so you're looking for a number. Remember that each uppercase letter, i.e. capital letter, indicates a new element. So there are three uppercase letters, so that is three different elements. The total number of atoms in the formula CaCO3 is, so Ca is one atom, carbon is another atom, and there's three oxygens. So add those up together and you'll get five. Name one of the substances produced at the cement works that causes atmospheric pollution. State one effect of this atmospheric pollution. Um, and if we look up, we can see that there is carbon dioxide released, which is the most um, straightforward thing to talk about. So you want to discuss carbon dioxide causing global warming or climate change, or you can say that it's a greenhouse gas. You could have actually also picked the cement particles and say that that may lead to asthma or global dimming. And if you're feeling fancy, you could have discussed the nitrogen forming nitrogen oxides, which leads to acid rain and destroys trees and makes lakes too acidic. So you had lots of choices there. C. Limestone is used to produce glass bottles. In recent years, we have become more aware of the need to recycle glass bottles. Used glass bottles can be recycled if they're put into bottle banks. So the used bottles are placed in a bottle bank. They're crushed. There's a furnace which heats them to 900 degrees. The glass is then molten and it becomes new bottles. Suggest two reasons why light bulbs should not be put in bottle banks. So here you need to think about a light bulb and how it is different to a regular bottle. And you want to say because it contains metal filaments, or you could say it contains other toxic chemicals or materials, or you could even say that it may contain a different type of glass so it might not melt down properly. New glass bottles can also be produced by heating a mixture of raw materials. Sand, silicon dioxide, SiO2, soda ash and limestone all go into the furnace and that's used to make new bottles. Suggesting two environmental reasons why we should recycle glass bottles to make new glass bottles. Whenever you see anything about recycling, what you want to say is that basically recycling means that there's less landfill. I always, always, always write that. Whatever you do, don't say less litter or less rubbish. They want the word landfill. You could also have said that, there, that it means that there'll be less resources used up or less energy is needed, or less fuel is burnt, meaning that less carbon dioxide is released, so less global warming takes place. Right, I'm going to stop there. I hope you found this video helpful, guys. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and tell your mates about my channel. Bye!